you might think it's impossible to solve a championship level Sudoku puzzle by repeating only the simplest, most basic Sudoku strategy there is. Well, I will show you how to solve this puzzle from round five of the Sudoku Grand Prix doing just that. I guarantee you are missing easy solving opportunities because you do not know when to crosshatch. Click below if you want to give it a go. And with that, it's solving time. First thing you're going to notice is you got this one cutting up here in column nine, and this one in column eight, and this one cutting across row three. The only place left for a one here in block three is right there. So this is called cross hatching. And this is what you should look for when you're first starting off a puzzle. It is the simplest, most basic strategy. And what it basically means, cross hatching, is to find a scanning across rows and columns to solve individual cells in a block. Whenever you find only one possibility for that candidate in a block, then you can solve for it. And that's also called a hidden single. So you might be able to go, okay, you know, a three could have been in this cell, or it looks like a seven could have been in this cell, but since the one is limited in this block to this one cell, you can solve it right away. I'm going to solve the rest of this puzzle using just this cross hatching. So if you look at the ones here in rows four and five, scan across and then come down column one, you can solve for one right there in block four. And then use these two ones, the one cutting across row seven, you can solve for one right there. We're not going to be able to solve the one here in block eight or block two because there's two possibilities. And I'm not even going to mark them using Snyder notation because I'm going to just use cross hatching to get through this. Let's start with the twos. Okay. You look with the twos, we have a, a nice little trick here. This two cutting across and this two coming down. We actually know the two can be in one of these two spots right there. And we can use this for our cross hatching benefit. All right. So a two can be in one of those spots. When you see that, you can incorporate a pointing pair into your cross hatching. So since we know a two's here, I'm looking down going, okay, well, the two in block four has to be one of these orange spots. So a two can't be in these two spots. And because of this two, it can't be here. This cell has to be a two. So using a pointing pair like that is still cross hatching. And it's nice because you can do that and quickly get a solve for a cell. And you'll be able to notice that. All right, let's go for the threes. You got these two threes in rows one and three. You can solve for three right here. And so as soon as I get out of that color mode, boom, I can solve for that three. I don't see anywhere else we can look for the threes. Now for the fours, I got four in row one and two. Got a four here in column two. There's only one place for a four in block one. So we were able to solve for the four right there. What else can we do with the fours? Uh, nothing. Let's go to the fives. I think we have a lot more that we can solve with the fives. Okay, so what we'll notice is you have this five cutting across here. So now the fives are limited to one of these two cells. So my eyes scanning across here going, oh, using cross hatching, I know five got me one of these spots. Now I'm going to come back over to block one and go, oh, one of fives can't be there because this five can't be here. And because of this five, it cannot be in this cell. There's only one cell left. So that has to be your five. So I'm still using cross hatching and I'm also incorporating that pointing pair to make the solve. And now with this five in column one and column three and this five cutting across row nine, we can make and solve our five right there. And with these two fives and the five in column six, we can solve for a five right there. I think we're gonna be able to finish all the fives. You have a five here in column six, column four, cutting across row four, only one place for a five here in block five. And then can you see where the last five goes in block six? Yeah, it goes here. All right, and now we use these two fives and I almost forgot, but we gotta get this five up here in block three. We've knocked out all the fives. You can look for the sixes and the sevens, but this time we're not going to be able to cross hatch and solve a six or a seven. But let's go to the eights. We're going to be able to solve for eights. We got two eights here in rows eight or nine. You got this eight coming down. Column eight, so we can solve for an eight right there. Nice. And now we're going to be able to work our way 
to solve even more with the eight. Okay, so what you have is this eight cutting across row two, this eight coming up column two, only one place for an eight in block one. Nice, now with these two eights, only one place for an eight in block four. Nice, and with these two eights, only one place for an eight here in block five. Okay, and we got these two eights, only one place for an eight in block two. Now we just knocked out all of the eights. And you're like, hey, Timberlake, you're kind of going fast for me. Well, you are going to get fast to this if you know how to do this pattern. You're just scanning from block to block using that cross hatching, scan your eyes across. I have made a tutorial that'll help you do this kind of speed solving. It is a speed solving. There's three, uh, three videos to it, speed solving part one, two, and three, and it'll help you solve these types of puzzles much quicker using this simple strategy. I'll put a link to it right here. You can check that out. And while you're at it, subscribe to Smart Hobbies, and you'll be able to solve these championship Sudokus even better using cross hatching. Okay, after the eight, we're going to look for the nine. All right, we got this nine here in column seven and column eight. Only one place for nine in block three. Great. So we got the nine there. And now with this nine cutting across, this nine coming up, we're going to solve for nine right here. Awesome. And then can we do anything else with the nines? Yep, we got these two nines here. We can solve for a nine in block eight. And then that's all we're going to do with the nines for cross hatching. Okay, you got to be patient about this. We're going to go back. Now, in column three, you know what you might notice is we're missing one candidate. And whenever you have this situation where eight of the candidates are filled out in a house, that's called a full house. And we know we can solve this. But we're going to use cross hatching to solve this particular candidate. And how we're going to do it is notice that there's no six up here. This six cuts up. We can solve for six right here. So that's how the cross hatching is going to help us. And once you solve for that six there, then uh, I'm not going to use and just find a naked single. I'm going to come back to cross hatch to get this cell. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. All right. Let's look for the sevens. You got the seven cutting up. And so there's only one place for seven here in block four. Now with these two sevens, the only one place left for seven block one. So that's how we use the cross hatching to make that happen. Okay, let's see what else we can do these sevens. Rows seven and eight, and now we can solve down here. And you remember, we went through the sevens and said there's nothing to solve initially. But now that we filled in this eight and we filled in a few other digits, we can use the cross hatching now. And so that's what you have to do, just kind of keep circling through the numbers. And once you get on a digit, if you're still solving, keep working that digit. So this seven cutting up, there's only one place for the first seven right here. I'm not going to fill this out because that's not part of the cross hatch I'm trying to show you right now. I'll come back and get it though. All right, these sevens in columns seven and eight, this seven cutting across means this has to be your seven here in block six. Looking great. Okay, after doing that, let's look at the fours now. You got this four cutting across, this four coming down, only one blade place left for a four here in block nine nice and after doing the four in block nine now we can do block six because we got the four here the four coming up and this four only one place for a four in block six and then we're not done with the fours yet we can actually look over in block seven because we got this four the four we solved here and we solve that four four all cross hatching to get all of these digits in all right now with this six coming down we can cross hatch to solve for the six right here in block seven. Okay, let's look and see with the threes. And the way to visualize it is you got a three here. You know a three has to be one of these cells. So it's kind of a pointing. So a three can't be there or there. And we know there's only one possibility left in the cell. So that is where your three has to be. Okay, we're using cross hatching to get that. Cut across row nine. Only one place for a three here in block eight. And we're able to get the three knocked out there as well. Let's see if we can get the three in block nine. Is there an easy way to make that happen? All right. Well, actually, let's cut up here. Because of block six, block four, only one place, four, three here in block five. And now let's shift over to the sixes. You got a six coming down here. Six cutting across row six, only one place for a six. So we cross hatch that six, which now cuts across row five, only one place for a six in block five knock that out and then can we solve for six here in block nine and we sure can because this six cuts down 
we can solve that for a six. The three cuts across, we can solve for a three. Looking good. Okay, after the three and the six, let's look at where nines can be in block four. Okay, this nine's cutting across here. Only two possibilities for the nine in block five, but they're both in row five, so this is a pointing pair. So the nine can't be there either, because we know it has to be in one of these two spots. So we can actually solve for the nine there using that cross hatching. Okay, let's take the sixes and see if we can solve in block two. Six coming up, column six, across row one, only one place left for a six in block two. And now at these two sixes, only one place for a six in block eight. Still doing all the cross hatching. And also, if you want to get better solving Sudokus like this, I do have a free solving guide. And there's a pinned comment. Click on the link in that, and you'll download that free guide. You will solve Sudokus like this. Get all the strategies I'm talking about, like the pointing pairs, hidden singles, naked singles. I explain it all to you. All right, after doing the six in block eight, now we can look at the ones. You got this one cutting down, and we can solve for a one here in block eight. And with these two ones, now I can solve for a one up here in block two. And we got all the ones taken care of. Now let's look at the nines. Where can a nine be up here in block two? Since this nine cuts across, I can solve for the nine there. The cross hatching is so easy because one, no marks, and two, you just scan across really quick with your eyes and you can make the solve. So you come down and notice there's no place for a nine in block five except for this cell right here. So we can make that solve. And we have knocked out all of the nines. All right, after the nines, let's look at the twos. You got, where can a two be now in block eight? All right, what you might notice is you got the two cutting across here. So the only place for a two in block nine is right there. And you come down, the only place left for a two in block eight is right there. And with these twos, the only place for a two in block two is right there. So that's how we use the cross action to get the twos knocked out. Now let's look at the sevens. We got seven across row four, seven across row six. This has to be your seven. So I'm using the cross hatching to look at it. I'm not looking in the block and counting up the eight digits and giving you it. I'm going to look for the cross hatching only. And it's amazing, but we've gotten this far using just the cross hatching. So let's look at the twos. You got this two cutting across row five. The only place left for a two in block four is right there. With these twos, this has to be your two. Awesome, knock that out. And now let's look and try to figure out what's gonna be in that cell. Well, what we know is you have a seven here in column five, a seven in column six. There's no seven up here. The only place left for a seven is right there. So you're able to knock out a seven right there. And then let's look and see what can be here in this cell, all right? So you got a two here in row one, a two in row two, no two in block three. This has to be your two. So we can knock that out. And then if you look right here, what can that be? Well, three cuts down, three comes up. There's no three in here. This has to be your three. And then you cut across row six, row four, no three here in block three or block four. So this has to be your last three. You think this puzzle was too easy? Well, watch this video to see how it rates against a puzzle two from another Sudoku Grand Prix. Please consider supporting Smart Hobbies through my Buy Me a Coffee page. I'd really appreciate it. It encourages me to make great content for you. Thank you so much for watching.